Attention all pharmacy industry professionals. This isn't your grandfather's podcast. This is... What the hell are you talking about? Our grandfathers never even listened to podcasts. The internet wasn't even around. Shut your pie hole. My grandfather loves podcasts and so does my maca. Your what? This is the RX Rated Podcast. Part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Did you say maca? Put the fidget spinners away. Punch in the coordinates for the jump to light speed. And do or do not, there is no try. What kind of asshat introduction is this? The podcast dedicated to all the pharmacy professionals in this crazy sector of healthcare. Um, what was that? The RX Rated Podcast. Dude, seriously, you already said that three other times. This is bullshit. Welcome to the RX Rated Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Jeffrey Winger. With me, as always, is my buddy, Dr. Maurice Shaw. Do you want to drop any handles? Uh, you can follow me on RX Comedy on YouTube or my Facebook page, uh, Maurice RX Comedy. Did you read that uh, article about CVS fine for understaffing and prescription errors in Oklahoma? No. Tell me about it. So the State Board of Pharmacy, um, I guess they went to four different uh, locations in the state, and they fined CVS for... Uh, understaffing and prescription errors. They said the State Board of Pharmacy imposed fines total, totaling 125000 uh, which is probably nothing to them, including a 75000 fine for a dosage error at its uh, one of its locations. Uh, the dosage error incident, a teenager received one-fourth of his prescribed dose of an anticonvulsant medication. The team took the incorrect dose for 18 days and experienced uncontrollable seizures. Holy shit. Um, some other things that I, I noted um, about the articles that uh, CVS agreed to distribute a memo to its pharmacists in the state highlighting a law that requires them to take action if working conditions in their pharmacies could lead to problems safely filling prescriptions. They did an audit. They found an error rate of nearly 22%. Um, or 66 errors out of 305 prescriptions. Damn. Some mistakes were minor that wouldn't affect the patient, but others were more significant, like instructions for medications that were unclear or substantially different from what they should have should have been. Um, they saying that <laughs> it says in one of the locations, calls were placed on hold for up to 60 minutes. <laughs> Jesus. Who holds that long? That's my thing. <laughs> complaining about being on hold. Why are you still holding? Call back later. Like, I would never call. There's no place I can think of that I will call that if I'm on hold for more than 15 minutes, I'd either go there or just call back tomorrow. Especially since so many of the reasons they're calling are things that if you got the app, you could answer your own question. Is my stuff ready? Well, if you had the app, you would know that. Or if you were signed up for texting, you would know that. Can I get this refilled? Well, if you had the app, you could just punch in the number. You wouldn't have to, like, all the calls we get are stuff that if they had the app, they could just do it themselves. But kudos to the Oklahoma State Board for auditing. I, I wish my state would do more of that. I got they also a question. said that the pharmacists on duty that day, according to the complaint, was responsible for checking 194 prescriptions in a six-hour shift, about one every two minutes, which that's why I made that video. It's not one every two minutes. That's assuming you're doing nothing. Yeah. for those six hours like i guarantee you that pharmacist probably did one script every 30 seconds yeah exactly well where you're at is it law that if a, let's say they call in a controlled drug not only do you have to have the patient's address you have to write that on the prescription pad but the doctor's address needs to be written on there too right yep what happens if you fail to put the doctor's address on there for example is if you Absolutely. get audited you get in trouble right well, I don't know. I've never, there might be some behind the scenes audit, but nobody's ever brought it to my attention. I usually put it on there, but I would have to venture sometimes to get so busy that it's well, probably slipped through. But my partner sometimes ne neglects to put the patient's address on there, but almost always forgets to put the doctor's address on there. And I'm thinking if we ever get audited, we're going to get so busted. I, I always put all that shit on there because I don't want to get in trouble, but he's so blase about some stuff. I, I think. Damn, if, if anyone ever looks into this and audits this pharmacy, you're in trouble. Well, I don't know how much trouble you would get in for something, because that seems like not a big deal, but it's law, right? Yeah. 
I don't know. <laughs> How often do you think they have audits? I've been there a year and a half, and we have had one. I've never seen an audit. Wow. <laughs> See, that's the problem. Maybe we should work in Oklahoma where they keep an eye on that shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, trying to think. So we're in late July. Uh, football season is around the corner. Are you excited or... Well, that one doctor or the football player that's in medical school, he, he said he's not playing this year. Why? Did he say why? Because um, of coronavirus and he doesn't feel uh, like they can, you know, have a season and, and make it safe. A lot of my conservative buddies are really sad that NASCAR and Major League Baseball and NFL and all these things are, you know, sort of kowtowing to the left vis-a-vis, you know, we're not going to play the national anthem anymore. And if you do, we're going to kneel or we'll just like the WNBA. We'll just walk out of the gymnasium if you start playing that shit. And it's like, I don't know. I think your average American is fairly patriotic and, and doesn't want to see their national anthem be smirched while they're trying to watch a sports game. Like keep the politics out of the sports. I don't, I don't, you know, I want to watch a football game. I, I don't want to have my, country be smirched while i'm trying to watch the pregame or something like, i remember ben shapiro says he stopped watching espn because it, it became you know the huffington post of sports casts like they got so political that even he a big sports fan like i can't watch this anymore because they're they're bad mouthing all the things that i believe in and even nascar which is let's face it mostly a a hillbilly, I don't want to say hillbilly, but you know what I mean? It's like a, a country boy, Western, mostly Caucasian, patriotic, blah, blah, blah. And even they're doing this. Like, I don't know. I, I feel you like got, I you got Bubba Wallace. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Adam Carolla's got a great documentary on Netflix about the, the first black NASCAR driver and the trials and tribulations he went through. It's called Uppity. And I know that sounds bad, but he actually took pride in being called uppity and he's in the documentary and he he brags about it like yeah i, I like being that come here it's like i'm tired of these first black movies like what's next the first black ping pong player <laughs> <laughs> i think bill bird did that yeah routine. bill bird's like i'm sorry it would be me but i'm tired <laughs> at some point like okay i don't care anymore <laughs> first black swim team okay <laughs> although i did like cool runnings with john candy that was a cool movie back in the i think it was the 80s Remember yeah. that? That was the bobsled team. That was actually pretty good. But anyway, I, don't, I feel like if they're going to politicize everything and Colin Kaepernick is going to wear socks that refer to cops as pigs, and you know, like, I'm just not going to watch anymore. As much as I was looking forward to this NFL football season, because I know the Bills are going to be good this year. Like, well, I can't lend my support to you guys if you're going to piss on all the patriotic stuff that I take pride in. You know what I mean? I don't know. We'll see what happens. And it's one thing to have like breast cancer awareness month where they're all wearing pink. I'm like, Oh my God, I can't, I'm watching NFL football players with pink. All, <laughs> I don't know. Do I sound bigoted? Like I just don't want to see guys wearing pink playing football. It's just, there's something about that aesthetically displeasing to my eyes. Like mm -hmm. can we pick another color next, or something? Next time I see you, I'm going to wear a pink polo. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just gone too far. Uh, we'll see. Hey, listeners, you know, either back me up on that or tell me where I'm wrong. I want, I want more participation from people. I want to see comments. So having said that, we'll end on a positive note. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll try to do these more regularly. So maybe in two weeks, we'll chat again. And until then, God, do I do it? Do I dare do it? Do Just it. remember, every prescription you fill is one more closer to retirement. There's a finite amount. It's, at some point in your life, you will have filled your last prescription. So if you keep filling, you'll get closer and closer to that last one. And then right, right till you get to your last 10 and about to retire, they'll fire you. <laughs> <laughs> no retirement for you. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Do you have vineyards in Illinois? You like the wine shit? Because my wife is always yeah, 
Let's go to this vineyard. Uh, it's one here. A few days ago, we went. There's like one right after the other. You'll you'll drink, you know, five little samples of wine, then you'll drive to the next one, drink five samples of wine, drive to the next one. It's like six or seven in a row in this area, not far from here. And I just love it. It's so much fun. They even have their own vodka, their own brandy sometimes. The, they, they have food. If you want to order lunch, you can eat. And it's really nice. If you're ever this way, I'll have to take you out there. Yeah, definitely. I'll be out there with my pink polo and my pink hat. <laughs> um, I just got back from Pennsylvania about 10 days ago. I went to a family reunion. We drove 11 hours from here to Erie, Pennsylvania. That was fun. Man, that, that is the place to be this time of year. It was in the upper 60s, lower 70s. I'm like, I can't believe it's mid-July and it's, it's 72 degrees out here. It was so you could sit outside. There weren't any bugs or mosquitoes. It's like, shit, I'm moving here someday. When I retire, I'm moving to Erie, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I want to be like Kanye. Kanye bought a ranch in Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, I heard uh, Chappelle visited him out there. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, everybody shows Kanye's rant. Where you talk about Harriet Tubman just brought the slaves to more white people. <laughs> yeah, I heard that Kim is trying to get him committed or something. Yeah, if you actually listen, like this parts where he just goes off the wall, but there's other parts where he's talking about like, I bet you most Americans don't know that you can buy huge lots of land and feed yourself and take care of yourself. And he talked about his ranch in Wyoming. I was like, he's probably got some, he's got some good parts. Then he just goes off the deep end. You know. When the shit hits the fan, it's nice to have your own food that you can make without having to drive to the supermarket. It's like, you should start growing your own food in case in your backyard. I'm like, I mean, I, I think that, you know, let's say all I have is strawberries, right? Like, to last me a whole year, I wouldn't need a, a whole lot of fucking, like, the shit in the garden is only going to last me like a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> then you got to go to the store. It's not like I'm out here, got my own farm, but I had a farm. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's um, true, huh? That's why you get a. That's like you can make your own basil. I was like, or I could go to the store and get a bunch of this shit in a fucking bottle. I know, but. But I think that's like retirement. It's peaceful. You grow it. Now I'm too busy. I tried to have a house plant and I can't even remember the water the fucking thing. <laughs> or you could do like my wife does and be a prepper and buy non perishable food, you know, that kind of bomb shelter food that they have. So, you know, if you ever are stuck in your house at least you can go down in the basement and get some of that bomb shelter canned food and that might last you a few months just stock up on that shit what's pharmacy called pharmacist how may i help you why am i the only one answering the phone over here yes i just wanted to leave my number so that you could call me when my prescription's ready i don't think you have my phone number okay what is it shoot it's 555-1234. Five, 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 okay, got it. We'll call you when it's ready. Wait, wait. Uh, let me give you another one. Uh, let me give you another number. Uh, that, forget that one. Let me give you a different one. Okay, go, go ahead. Uh, let's see. 555-1234. Uh, five, 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 uh, okay, got it. We'll call you. Excuse me. How long does this prescription last? Uh, for non-controlled drugs, it's good for a year. Oh, I, I was hoping like one to two years. No, they're only good for one year. From the date they were written. Oh, all right. Well, I was just wondering how long lidocaine lasted. Well, now that's a different question. The drug itself, there's an expiration date on the box. That's probably good for, like you said, a couple of, maybe a few years. Oh, so how long is this going to last? It expires in June. 2015. So it's not just one year. Well, words mean things, and the way you phrased your question, I thought you were asking how long the prescription was good for. The drug itself lasts longer than the written prescription. Well, how long is the prescription good for? We just covered that. The prescription is good for a year. The drug is good until June 2015. Okay? Do you know who I am? No. Who'd you marry? Hi. I've been to 11 pharmacies and no one has this in stock. Do you guys carry this? Well, I'm glad we were your first choice. Let's see, uh, hydromorphone, 8 milligrams, 240. Let me go check. 
No, ma'am, I'm sorry. You, uh, gee, we're the 12th pharmacy that does not have this in stock. I'm, I don't know what to tell you. Good luck. Pharmacy, how can I help you? It'd really be nice if someone else would answer the phone once in a while. Yes, I want to know if you charge for shipping. Yes. Well, not if it's a compound. So, are you asking me or are you telling me? Well, do you or don't you? Again, yes, we do. Even if it's a compound? Are you going to just keep asking me this until you get the answer you want? Yes, even if it's a compound. Any other questions? Pharmacy, how can I help you? Yes, this is Nurse Maleficent. I'm calling in a prescription from Dr. Spiegelsbeis. Can you spell the doctor's name for me again? Spiegelsbeis. I repeat, can you spell the doctor's name again? You do know the difference between spelling and pronouncing, right? I assume you're somewhat partially educated. Am I wrong? Uh, S P. E B G T B C G T B B B B. Okay, that's not helping me. We have a bad connection. When you spell the letters, do me a favor. Say C is in cat, B is in boy, P is in Paul. Okay, can you do that? Uh, we've called this prescription in here before. Okay, but guess what? Staff changes, and I'm new here, so I don't know. I'm not familiar with this doctor or this patient or their prescription or anything that you're saying. So let's pretend we're doing this for the first time. Let's be professionals, okay? And spell everything properly for me so that I understand, so that, you know, the patient gets the right medication. Can we, can we do that? Yeah, I, I have a phone attached to my head right now. Uh, when I'm done with this, I'll be with you. Just tell them to wait a minute. Can, can they wait for one minute? Can, can you wait for one minute? Hold on there. Jesus. Yeah, this customer needs to talk to you. Okay. Yes, sir. How can I help you? Yeah, I just, I just need a refill. Really? I, that's all you need is a, a refill. They, they couldn't help you with that. Okay, uh, what's it for? For the sugar. Your refill is for the sugar. You're saying that you're a diabetic and you need a refill on your diabetic medication and I take it you don't know the name of what you're taking that prevents your diabetes from getting out of control and killing you? Okay, let me look at your profile. I'm with a customer right now. I'll be right with you. Yes, sir. Okay, so I see that you, you're on metformin. We'll refill that for you right away. It'll take 10, maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, what, what did you need? Hello? What are you doing? You look like you're lost in philosophical tranquility. What do you mean? You look like a deer in headlights. What's the question? We, we need a prescription out of the safe. It's for C2 and it's locked up in the safe. Okay, here you go. And can you do me a favor? When you're done bringing him up, can you put away the drugs, the go-backs? It's beginning to overflow. <sighs> Why do you look at me like I'm asking you to fetch me some coffee? You look at me like I'm Gary Coleman in freaking 9 to 5. I'm asking you as a technician to do what you're supposed to do. That, that's what technicians do. Every time I ask you to do something, you make me feel like I'm inconveniencing you. Why can't you do what you're supposed to do without me asking you? Pharmacist, how can I help you? Yeah, this is Sandy from the Mail Order Pharmacy. We need to get a, a, some information from your pharmacy. Okay, uh, what do you need? Well, Mr. Johnson wants to get his prescriptions filled there. Can, can you do that? Yeah, let me look them up and I'll transfer it to your pharmacist. While I have you on the phone, we didn't get this, but do you have his date of birth? Yeah, his date of birth is 4856. 8556? No, 4856. Oh, and we also need his wife's prescriptions. We're going to transfer them here. She's going to go on mail order. Her name is Christine. Christine with a CH? No, Christine with a K. Well, I'm sorry. There is more than one way to spell Christine. I guess. I guess. There's many, many ways to spell Christine. You're not very intelligent, are you? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you're a blithering idiot. Well, I don't understand why I have to be so rude. I'm being rude because you're huffing and puffing that I want specifics here. We're talking about people's health. Can you not spell the name for me knowing that there's multiple spellings for her name? Christine with a K. Yeah, I got that now. But let's go back to the beginning of the conversation when all you did was pronounce her name. 
I don't know how to spell it. I don't know Christine personally. It could be K-R-I. It could be C-H-I. It could be any kind of freaking combination. Nowadays, it's C-R-Y. You don't know how to spell people's names these days. Everybody spells their name funky ways. Let's be specific and just forward that information right away, knowing that there's multiple variations. Is that too much to ask? Well, you're very rude and unprofessional. I apologize. Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe I came off rude and unprofessional. I just, I don't have time for this. Uh, you know, I ask you a question, just answer it. I don't need the huffing and puffing. I'm not your husband, okay? I'm a pharmacist. How about a little interdisciplinary respect between professions? Jesus, you've really been treated like shit, haven't you? <laughs> you don't know the half of it, lady. Trust me. I'm surrounded by people that make assumptions all day and give no specifics whatsoever. They ask me to grab a clonazepam out of the safe. I have to ask them 0.5, 1 milligram, 2 milligram. Which clonazepam do you need? Or they'll say they need MS Contin. Okay, 15, 30, 60, 100, 200. Which MS Contin do you need? You feel my pain? Excuse me. Excuse me, technicians. Got to get through. Someone with a work ethic coming through. Hello, Dr. Jose's office. I can't help you. Yeah, this is Mark at the pharmacy. You had called earlier for a prescription for a patient, one BID for Mrs. Johnson's uh, clonazepam, but she normally takes two at bedtime, so I need to verify. Has the dosage changed? Oh, yeah, oh, she take one BID. So it has changed from two at bedtime to one twice daily? Uh, oh, no, 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 she take two tablets at bedtime. Okay, this is important because there's a difference. There's a difference between one BID and two at bedtime. So you, so you are saying that it is two at bedtime. Just, just want to verify. That's why I'm calling. Oh, yes, yes, two at bedtime. Okay, thank you. You're very good at this job, by the way. Uh-oh, I'm slipping up. They can detect my sarcasm. Doctor, line one. Yes, pharmacist, how can I help you? Yeah, my name is Brad. I'm just calling to see if you had filled a prescription for Sally Slogwitz uh, recently. All you need to know is if we've filled something for her recently. My text should have been able to answer that. Uh, let me check her profile. No, I don't even have her in my computer. Okay, thank you. Good enough. Yeah, that, that's why I'm here, is to answer questions that uh, no one else can answer. Excuse me, technicians. Man at work here. Would all bystanders please step aside? This patient has a question for you. Yes, ma'am. How can I help you? Oh, I get questions. I get so many prescriptions. See, I'm in Medicato, and I have so many prescriptions. I have questions. Does this interact with that? And does that interact with this? And, oh, you should believe, you couldn't believe the trouble I had trying to get the... No, ma'am, there are no drug interactions with any th of the umpteen drugs you're taking, and you, you had a problem with what? Oh, this lady parked next to me, and she didn't even come in your pharmacy. She she prevented me from coming out of my car, and I, I, I'm going to call the, the local news, and I'm going to re report her... Wait, you want to call the local news and report to them that someone wouldn't let you get out of your car, someone who parked in front of our pharmacy who didn't come in? Actually, I, I think I saw that lady. She did come in. I, maybe it just took you so long to get out of your car, but you didn't notice her, but... Really, I mean, the center of the universe called. They want their position back. Hey, I have a question. Sir, yes, sir. You only filled this for 30 days. How come? Your insurance will only pay for a 30-day supply. Why? I'm not your insurance, so I don't know why. You'd have to call your insurance and ask them why, since they're the ones that are... No, I want to know why. Why are you used to fill it before, and now you only fill it for 30 days? Why? First of all, calm down. Secondly, listen. Don't talk. Listen. Your insurance is telling us that we can only fill for a 30 day supply. If you want details, you gotta call them. Okay, pal? Hi, I'm the pharmacist. How can I help you? <coughs> yeah, I have a question about something that I got. <coughs> ma'am, ma'am. What, could you please not cough directly into the phone, okay? When you feel the impulse to cough coming on, could you could you please hold the phone away from your mouth? Could, could, can I ask you to do that, please? Oh, sure. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I just did. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm not gonna talk to you if you keep coughing in my ear. You're gonna give me hearing damage, okay? Well, I just wanna know. <laughs> Patient has a question for you. Pharmacist, how can I help you? Yes, my doctor called in a prescription. I want to know, is it a peel or a liquid? Wait, 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 let me get this straight. Your question to me is, did your doctor call in a prescription and you want to know if it was a pill or a liquid? That's your question? See. Si. I'm sorry, hold on one second. Technicians, ask the customer what their question is and then if it's something you can't answer and only a pharmacist can answer, then I'll be happy to take it. But th this gotta stop, okay? You guys are giving me phone calls, you're interrupting me, you're, you're breaking my concentration. You can answer these questions. Jesus. Excuse me, I'm here to pick up. Yes, sir, uh, someone will be with you in a second. Well, what's your last name? Morn. Your last name is Moron? No, Morin, Morin, M-O-R-I-N. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, someone will be right with you. Yes, Mr. Morin, that'll be 888. Just sign here that you're picking up. Do I press clear? No, Mr. Moron, press done. Done. No, just press done. We need a transfer. Yes, you have reached Dr. Evelstein's office. For records, press one. For billing, press two. For Nurse Ratchet, press three. For Dr. Stengel's nurse, press four. For refills, press five. For the operator, press zero. For the weather, press nine. You got a nurse on line too. Pharmacist calling in a prescription? Yeah, the last name is Shepard. S-H-E- Wait, I don't have anyone with the last name S-H-E. Are you sure that's how you spell it? Yeah, S-H-E. Well, I have someone in my computer by the name of Shepard S-C-H-E-P. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They always do that. They, they always do what? They always misspell this patient's name. Well, if they always misspell this patient's name, then get the proper spelling. Just, just spell it. Get it in the computer and spell it properly. Well, I have the date of birth. You you have the date of birth? Well, I think we have the date of birth, too. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all guys filled this for her before. We all guys have filled this for her before? Yeah, and she don't got no refills. That's why we're calling you now. Yeah, so we all guys have filled this for her before, and she don't got no refills, so you, that's why you're calling, of course. I understand. Go ahead. Uh, well, before I do, she wants to know how much are them. You're telling me the patient wants to know how much are them? Like she wants the price of the medication? Yes, and what time are you open till? Well, we're open till five, and the price is $39.95. Oh, she, she, does, she says that's way more than it was last time. Well, I look, I'm looking at her profile. I'll tell her not to act so surprised. I mean, this is what we've been charging her since she was wearing bell bottoms. Excuse me, Tex, higher primate, coming through, make way. Hey, what is that prescription you're typing there? It looks like something that was found in an archaeological dig back in the 1910s. What, what is that? Oh, it's just a prescription we got from South America. Oh, well, that explains it. Um, we can fill that? How do you know who the doctor is? It's stamped on there. Yeah, but without a DEA number that shows that they're licensed in this country... Uh, forget it. Just go ahead and fill it. There's another pharmacy on the line. Wants a transfer. Uh, let me get this first. Yes, you need a transfer. What's the patient's name? Uh, he just picked that up yesterday. We just filled that. Yeah, he paid for it and everything. Well, no, I understand that, but he got it. We just, no, he, uh, lady. No, he picked it up. We filled it. It's done. I can't transfer it. No, I can't. I already told you three times. He picked it up. He paid for it. We transferred it. No, no, we we filled it. Your rudeness is making me upset. I'm stumbling over my words here. Let me calm down for a second. Yes, you are being rude. I don't. Are you the pharmacist? You're just a tech. Can I speak to the pharmacist and tell him? Yeah. I, ma'am, let me talk to your pharmacist. I don't appreciate the attitude. I don't know. 
I can't transfer it. It's not here anymore. There are no refills. There's no refills. The prescription's dead. Are you from New Jersey? Hello, it's your drug dealer. I thought I'd call in case you needed anything at all. You know, you can always call me just to talk. But I mostly want to sell you drugs. Drug dealer.